In the previous episode, I showed you how to set up a Facebook sign-in process for your application, so this way users can sign into your app through Facebook. To do this, I created a Facebook app for the site called Cinematron, and then I set up the OmniAuth Facebook gem to handle the authentication on the server side, and I also provided an optional client-side authentication process, which uses the Facebook JavaScript SDK. So now that we're able to authenticate users through Facebook, this opens up a variety of opportunities to integrate Facebook further into our app. And that's what I want to talk about in this episode. Now I will be using the Koala gem for communicating with Facebook's API through Ruby. The documentation for this gem is quite nice and it's easy to use as well. So what you do is you just pass in the user OAuth token into this line of code, and then you can interact with the API. So let's jump right in. At the bottom of the gem file for my application, I'm going to add the uh, Koala gem, and then you'll need to run the bundle command to install it. And then inside of my user model, I'm going to make a convenient method called Facebook for interacting with the Facebook API with this user's credentials. Here I can use Koala, as it was shown in the readme, to make a new Facebook API instance, and then pass in the OAuth token, which is a column on the user model, which I saved when the user authenticated. And then uh, let's uh, cache this in an instance variable so it only uh, creates the instance once. So with this in place, let me go into the Rails console and fetch a user that I've signed in as through Facebook. And this way I can call that Facebook method to access the API through Koala. So I can call a method like get object on here and let's get the me object, which will be the current user's profile. And this will return a hash of information about the current user. Now here we are using Facebook's Graph API, which is actually quite nice. It helps to understand that you'll be interacting with two different types of things. Uh, you can interact with objects, which could be a user, a page, an event, or you can interact with connections, which link objects together. A user has many friends and likes and so on. Now the links on the left of this page will give us further documentation about a particular type of object. If I click on user here, this will tell us the different attributes which might be returned when we make a request for a user object, and it also lists out the various permissions which are required to access that attribute. And I'll talk more about permissions later. And further on down here are a list of connections which you can access through a given user to see what friends they have, uh, the different events, and uh, their likes, and so on. So this is what is happening in the console when I call the getObject method provided by Koala. So passing in me here will fetch the data for the current user through the Graph API. We can also call Facebook.getConnection instead of getObject. So this takes two arguments, the object to focus on, in this case I'll use me again, and the uh, connection. So let's do television to see what uh, television shows I liked in my Facebook profile. So this returns an array of objects instead. And I only have one here, the uh, Big Bang Theory, great show. Um, but notice that each object has an ID attribute. And you can pass this into the get object call, so this way you can get more information about what a given connection uh, has. So this provides us with a full description, a picture URL, and so on. Now some objects have a username attribute, which you can use instead of an ID. So you can pass that in on the get object call and that will return that same object. Now another great way to experiment with the Graph API is through the Explorer tool. Uh, this just accesses the public API by default, but you can uh, paste in an OAuth token from a user record here, and then you authorize through those credentials. So here that now displays more detailed information because we're accessing through that user. This even shows us the connections for this object on the right side, so we could click on television here again to access that information, and IDs are clickable as well, so we can drill in further into that object, and then we can see the connections for that given object on the right here as well. So this is a really nice interface, a great way to learn more about the Graph API. Now what if you want to do more than just fetch information about objects? Well, if you check out the Graph API section of the Koala Wiki, you can find some other methods which you can call for creating wall posts, uh, deleting objects, liking something, and more. Also, check out the rdocs for Koala's Graph API methods module. There you can find documentation on each of the various methods that you can call to access the Graph API. So let's try using one of these methods to post to a user's wall. That's called put wall post, and then you can just pass in a string as a message. And then we get an exception raised saying that we're unauthorized to perform this action. So here we get into permissions and each authentication token has a set of permissions assigned to it. There's a nice reference in the documentation of the various permissions for accessing the user's information and their friend's information. 
and performing various actions on the user's behalf, such as publishing to their stream. So is this permission right here keeping us from posting content to the user's wall? Now you can determine what permissions you have programmatically by calling get connection and then passing in me and permissions as arguments into here. And I just have one permission here, installed, meaning that this user has installed this app into their Facebook account. So this access token is really restricted. Now to gain permissions, we have to request them from the user when they authenticate. And to do this with the OmniAuth Facebook gem, just go to the initializer where we set up the Facebook provider and pass in a scope option. And you can pass in a comma separated list of permissions here, such as uh, let's say we want to be able to read their email address and publish to their stream. Now, if you're using the JavaScript SDK for authentication, then you'll need to pass uh, this option into there. So going into our CoffeeScript file, uh, this needs to be passed in as a second argument to the Facebook login function. So this is a little bit of a strange uh, syntax in CoffeeScript, but basically to pass a second argument here, I can start it with a comma and then uh, pass that same scope option here with those same permission settings here. So if you're duplicating this across those two files, you might want to move this into some kind of uh, constant maybe, and then use ERB inside of here. So now let's see what it looks like when a user tries signing in through our application for the first time. First, it asks them if they want to authenticate this app with uh, sharing their basic information and including the email address this time. Let's try logging in with Facebook. And then it uh, asks us if we want to allow this app to post on your behalf. So the user has the ability to allow or disallow given permissions that you request. So we could hit the X here and then click skip, which would uh, skip that permission for the application. So here the user was able to sign in successfully, but the OAuth token doesn't have permission to post to their wall. So be aware of that. The user can disable certain permissions when they sign in. So you'll, your app will have to adapt to that. Now let's say I did grant this app permission to post content. I don't really want to test that behavior on my real Facebook account. So it would be nice if we had test accounts and you can set that up by editing the app and going to the role section. And there's a section here for uh, test users. So you can add as many test users as you want specifically for this app. And that's the only purpose that they will have. So I'm going to make three test users and I'll leave uh, these boxes unchecked for now. And there we go, it successfully added three users. So this is really cool because now we have three test users which each behave like a full Facebook account. And if you click on modify here, you can manage them. Uh, we can make them all friends, for example so that we can test their friendship behavior. And uh, let's just check them all and make them all friends. And we can even switch to one, and then it will be like we're signed in as that test user. So now when I go to my app and click sign in with Facebook, I'll be authenticating as that test user because I switched to him. And when I click lo log in with Facebook, I can grant post permissions now because testing it will just post to this test account and not my actual Facebook account. So let's try this out in the console. First, I'll fetch that user. And then if I check the permissions again on this, now I have many more permissions, including publish stream. Uh, notice I have the ability to upload photos and videos and change the status and so on because publish stream includes all these uh, permissions. And also I have the email permission listed here too. Now let's put this to the test by calling uh, put wall post again. And then let's say testing. And this time we don't get an exception, so it looks like it worked. And when I visit facebook.com and browse to the wall, you can see there's the post. Now, one thing I haven't shown you so far is FQL. This stands for Facebook Query Language, and we can test this out directly inside of the Graph API Explorer. So here I can write queries that look similar to SQL and allow us to access data in a way that's not really possible through the normal Graph API. So let's say I'll select the uh, picture URL from the page table where the username is uh, Amazon and click submit, and that brings up that picture URL. We can say username is Amazon or the username is Google. And then that will find both of those picture URLs. So kind of flexible query language here that you can use to uh, search for data. Now, if you want to access this through Koala, you can do so by calling the FQL query method and then passing the query into there, and that will return the same results. Check out the docs for the Facebook query language for more information on the different queries you can perform, and there's a nice reference of tables and the columns they contain here too. 
I want to finish up this episode by talking about error handling. Now off camera, I logged out of Facebook, and when that happens, it invalidates all access tokens that applications might have. So this means if I try to access the uh, Facebook API, maybe get an object for the current user profile, and this exception gets raised, saying that the OAuth token is invalid because the user has logged out. So how do we handle this within an application? Because we don't want this to bubble up and just give a 500 error to the user. I think I can illustrate this problem better through the app itself. Let's say that on this page, for some reason, I want to display the number of friends a user has at the top here. So what I might do is go into the user model and add a new method in here called friends count, and then grab all the friends through the Facebook get connection method and call me friends and grab the size of the array that's returned here. I'm sure there are more efficient ways to grab the friends count, but this is just an example of an API call. And then going into the index template where I'm listing out the movies, I'll just toss in some code here to list that friends count if we have a current user. Okay, so now when someone goes and signs in through Facebook, it should display that friends count perfectly fine and it works. But now what happens when the user goes to facebook.com and logs out here? And now when they visit the application again, it shows that exception, which would be a 500 error to the user. Not a very good experience. So one thing we can do is go inside of that friends count method and rescue from that API error exception. And you might want to log the exception just in case so you have record of it, and then just return nil instead of the actual friend count result. Now, if you don't like the idea of returning nil here, you might want to make a custom null object to represent the idea that the API errored out. That would also have the benefit of being able to access the exception from within that object. Anyway, now when I reload this page, it no longer displays the error, it doesn't list out the friends, but at least the page loads. Now, if you find that you're doing this kind of thing a lot, what you could do is move this into the Facebook method itself and use a block to this Facebook method. So uh, let's pass in a block here and let's have it accept a Facebook object, which we call get connection on. So this way it can happen within this Facebook method if a block is given, then it yields to the block and passes that Facebook object. Otherwise, it's just going to uh, pass the Facebook object back. So this way, the uh, actual block will be triggered from within this method, which will catch the exception here. So now reloading the page, and it still has the same functionality, maybe just a little cleaner. Now another thing you might wanna do is automatically sign the user out of your application through some JavaScript if they are not currently signed in through Facebook. So to do that, it might look something like this where we check out if there's a sign out link on the page. And if there is, then we're going to get the Facebook login status. And if we're currently not logged in, then we set the Windows location to that sign out link href. By the way, don't worry about calling get login status multiple times. I believe that value is cached in the browser. Now, if I reload this page, it should automatically trigger that JavaScript since I'm signed out of Facebook, but it doesn't seem to work. Now the reason this doesn't work is because this application is running under sandbox mode, which basically makes it invisible to all public users. So when I sign out, it doesn't properly initialize with the JavaScript SDK when it's in sandbox mode for a public user. So let me try disabling sandbox mode temporarily and saving those changes. So now reloading the page should trigger that Facebook SDK and sign me out, and it does. Well, that's about all I have for this episode, but there is some more to Facebook's Graph API, which I didn't cover here, in particular, real-time updates. You can check out the Koala README for more information on this. It's pretty awesome. It basically allows you to subscribe and listen to event changes, and when that happens, you can provide a callback URL for it to trigger, and Facebook will call that when, let's say, the user updates their profile information or something else. Now, even though I've covered a lot of ground in this episode, there's still more I can do to integrate Facebook into this movie's app. I want it so that when a user writes a review that it notifies other users on Facebook about the review so they can come and check it out. Now, I could post to the user's wall whenever they write a review, but that's pretty poor behavior and there must be a better way to do this. And there is, and that is using the Open Graph protocol. Now, I won't be covering this here, but I plan to cover it in detail in a future episode, so stay tuned for that. Well, that's all I have for this episode on the Facebook Graph API. Thanks for watching.